File item 35, AB 653, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 653 by Assemblymember Levine, an act relating to post-secondary education. Mr. Levine, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 653 is back on concurrence with technical and clarifying amendments from the Senate. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I-64, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 36, AB 721. The clerk will read. Assembly Rule 721 by Assemblymember Medina, an act relating to student financial aid. Mr. Benita, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. AB 721 is back on concurrence. This bill would require schools to report on graduate student debt and help students avoid unnecessary private loans. AB 721 provides students with the necessary information to make informed decisions about college attendance costs and student lending options. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seen and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I-68, no, zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. I'm sorry. Colleagues, at this time, I'm going to lift the call on file item 32. The clerk will post. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tally the votes. Eyes 44, noes 29. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Going back to file item 37, AB 738, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 738 by Assemblymember Beth Gaines, an actor to public transit. Ms. Gaines, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask for your concurrence in Senate amendments to AB 738 that would help provide a more updated and streamlined way for cities and counties to participate in Sacramento Regional Transit serv Services and Amenities. Senate am amendments removed all opposition, and I respectfully ask for an I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I-74, no, zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Going now to file item 39, AB 768. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 768 by Assembly Member Thurmond and others, an act related to tobacco. Assembly Member Thurmond, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 768 is back for a concurrence uh, for amendments taken on on the Senate floor. Uh, this bill would ban the use of smokeless tobacco on the playing fields of our uh, California professional baseball stadiums. Uh, AB 768 is all about the kids. We're concerned about what they see from major league players and keeping tobacco out of their view. Uh, to that end, the amendments do not supersede any action taken by any city as it relates to stadiums in their community, as the city of San Francisco has done earlier this year. The bill will take effect December of 2016, and we have support from the Major League Baseball Association. We've been working closely with the Players Association to address their concerns. I would like to, as a matter of personal privilege, note that at our most recent softball match between both caucuses in this House, I believe that every member on the field role modeled exactly what this bill is about not using smokeless tobacco in the present view of our children. Let's pass this bill and pave the way for our California stadiums to do the same. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. Eyes 46, noes 18, the Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 40, AB 856, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 856 by Assemblymember Calderon and others, an act relating to privacy. Mr. Calderon, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 856 closes a loophole in existing law to clarify that it's trespassing for paparazzi to fly a drone over private property. The Senate amendments were technical and clarifying, and as co-authors, I respectfully ask for your I vote on concurrence 24 to 10. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. 
All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. I 69, no, zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 41, AB 906. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 906 by Assemblymember Cooper and Act Related to Transit. Assemblymember Cooper, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Senate amendments to AB 906 improve the bill and all opposition has been removed. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes, I 68, knows 1. The Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 42, AB 1016, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1016 by Assemblymember Santiago, an actually in a public post-secondary education. Uh, Assemblymember Santiago, you're recognized. Speaker and members, AB 16 is back for concurrence. Senate amendments clarify reporting requirements and decrease cost. This bill has uh, bipartisan support, no opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seen and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I 69, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 43, AB 1141, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1141 by Assemblymember Chow and actually in civil actions. Assemblymember Chow, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. AB 1141 would reinstate and make permanent summary adjudication statutes that were inadvertently sunsetted. Furthermore, it creates equity between defendants and plaintiffs by allowing both defendants and plaintiffs to seek post-offer costs for expert witnesses. The Senate passed the amendments with a 40-0 vote. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seen and hearing no further debate, the clerk will... Uh, sorry. Mr. Wagner, you're recognized. Uh, apologies. Uh, thank you. And I just want to let uh, my colleagues know I was a no on this in Judish. I want to thank the author and the folks uh, who worked so hard on the, on the Senate side to make this bill much more fair and balanced. Uh, accordingly, I'm up on it and uh, urge an I vote as well. Mr. Chow, would you like to close? I respectfully ask for I vote. All members vote who desire to vote. I'm oh, sorry. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I-67, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 44, AB 1197. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1197 by Assemblymember Bonilla and Act Related to Desk Positions. Assemblymember Bonilla. Why don't we pass on this item temporarily and go to file item 45, AB 1274. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1274 by Assemblymember Mark Stone and actually into public lands. Mr. Stone, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, you've supported this bill before. The Senate did not mess it up. I ask for your aye vote. <laughs> seeing, and no hearing, seeing and hearing no further debate about how the Senate has not messed it up, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tie the votes. I 62 knows zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Going to file item 46, AB 1374, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1374 by Assembly Member Levine and Act Related to Psychologists. Mr. Levine, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I'm pleased to present AB 1374. The bill makes two non controversial changes in the law regulating psychology. The Senate brought clarity to this and addressed chaffering out conflicts. Ask for an I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I 63, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. File item 47, AB 1446, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1446 by Assemblymember Dababne and actually into finance lenders. Mr. Dababne, you may open. Mr. Chair, Mr. Colleagues, AB 1446 is a simple bill that clarifies the authority of the Commissioner of the Business Oversight to issue and detest and refrain orders under the California Finance Lenders Law for the violation of an order or regulation made pursuant to that law. Amendments taken in the Senate were technical in nature. AB 1446 has received bipartisan support. And as a simple clarification, I ask for your I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. 
All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I-67, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Colleagues, we're going to pass and retain file item 48, as well as file item 53 and 54. This time we're going to go to file item 55, AGR 22. The clerk will read. Assembly Joint Resolution 22 by Assemblymember Mullen and others relative to the federal poverty level measurement. And these are now the third reading items. Mr. Mullen, you may open in your item. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Members, poverty in California is serious, pervasive, and far higher than the official numbers suggest. According to the official poverty measure, 16% of Californians are living in poverty. The Census Supplemental Poverty Measure, which incorporates California's high cost of living and the effect of safety net programs such as food stamps, suggests that California's poverty rate is even higher at 23.4%. The official poverty measure is used to determine whether a family is eligible for a wide range of federal programs, including the Children's Health Insurance Program, Medicare, SNAP, and the School Breakfast Program. The method we use today was developed in 1964 and does not account for variations in the cost of living in different regions of our country, the uh, increase in child care expense, expenses being experienced, and for variations in health care coverage and out-of-pocket medical costs. AJR 22 urges federal policymakers to reform the outdated and inadequate official poverty measure to better reflect poverty and unmet needs as demonstrated by the supplemental poverty measure. Uh, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tie the votes. Ayes 49, noes 14. The AJR is adopted. Going now to file item 56, ACR 101. The clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 101 by Assemblymember Bro relative to Coastal Cleanup Day. Mr. Bro, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. ACR 101 recognizes September 19th as California Coastal Cleanup Day. Since 1985, more than 1.3 million California volunteers have removed over 21 million pounds of litter from our coastline. Uh, there's currently a display in the Eureka Room of historical Coastal Commission cleanup photos. I ask that you go down there and, and check out the display. Uh, please join with me and the California Coastal Commission to recognize September 19th as Coastal Cleanup Day. And Mr. Speaker, I'd like the first roll to be open for co-authors. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Mr. Bro has asked the first roll to be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors. This is for co-authors. The clerk will close the roll. We've added 72 co-authors. Without objection, we'll take a voice vote on this measure. All those in favor, please say aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Going to file item 57, ACR 102. The clerk will read. Assembly concurrent resolution 102 by Assemblymember Salas relative to Red Ribbon Week. Assemblymember Salas, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. ACR 102 would proclaim October 23rd to October 31st as Red Ribbon Week and, we, and would encourage all Californians to help build drug-free communities and participate in drug prevention activities. Uh, Red Ribbon Week helps educate grade school students about the dangers of substance abuse. And Mr. Speaker, I'd ask that the first roll please be open for co-authors. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Mr. Salas has asked the first roll to be open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors. This roll is for co-authors. The clerk will close the roll. We're adding 71 co-authors, and without objection, we'll take a voice vote on this measure. All those in favor, please say aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. File item 58, AJR 25. The clerk will read. Assembly Joint Resolution 25 by Assemblymember Lackey and others relative to cannabis businesses. Assemblymember Lackey, you're recognized. Yeah, Mr. Speaker and members, I'm honored to present Assembly Joint Resolution Number 25, which calls on the federal government to update its laws to allow the cannabis industry to access financial services. 
Today, cannabis businesses cannot open bank accounts because of various federal requirements for financial institutions. The regulatory uncertainty created by these requirements caused most banks and credit unions to avoid the industry altogether. The entire cannabis industry is cash-based, and as a result, it causes enormous concerns in regards to both public safety as well as tax compliance. The cannabis business often have huge amounts of cash on hand with no place to deposit the cash. They are forced to bring in large bags of cash to government offices to pay their taxes, which is a danger to the business owner and the government agency. Furthermore, lack of bank accounts make auditing business tax compliance very difficult. This results in cannabis businesses either knowingly or unknowingly paying less taxes to state and local government. Please join me in urging Congress to find a solution to this problem. Mr. Ridley Thomas, you're recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, I rise in support of this resolution as one who dis gener generally does not like cannabis in any form. I recognize the common sense nature of this gentleman's proposal from Antelope Valley and the scourge that it can create if we don't have banking practices that make sense for these unique businesses. With that, I would respectfully request an I vote and thank the gentleman for this measure. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Mr. Lackey, you may close. Thank you. I just respectfully ask for your support through an I vote. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. This is an AJR requiring a roll call vote. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. Eyes 60, noes 1. The resolution is adopted. We're going to pass and retain file item 59 and go to file item 60, AB 199. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 199 by Assemblymember Eggman and others, an act relating to alternative energy, declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. We are going to pass temporarily over this item. Colleagues, I ask if you could just track where your items came up so that you will be here when we call it. Uh, if we can go to file items, uh, we're going to pass and retain file item 61 and 62, as well as a file item 63, going now to Senate third reading. File item 64, SCR 50, the clerk will read. Senate Concurrent Resolution 50 by Senator Nielsen relative to World, World War II Remembrance Month. This will be presented by Mr. Chavez. Mr. Chavez, you may open. Yes. There's an African proverb that says, when the elephants fight, the grass is trampled. This SCR is a recognition of World War II. I know it should have been done in June, but because of administration processes, this was not presented during the appropriate time, but that does not reduce the importance of this SCR. As you know, World War II, we had over 30 major nations involved. It changed the direction of the world and moved in the whole issue of a bipolar world between communism and capitalism. To no small measure, nearly 16 million Americans were involved in World War II who went off to fought, fight. Today we only have about one million of these veterans still alive. And today when we finish this session, 1,000 of these World War II veterans will pass today. This is a recognition of the service that they've given, recognition that truly when war happens, it's exactly like the African proverb, when the elephants fight, the grass is crumbled. Truly, the world was changed because of World War II. We recognize this, hopefully, so we'll never, ever experience this again. I'd ask for you to, uh, for an I vote for this resolution. Thank you. Mr. Wagner, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In early February, this body passed a resolution honoring uh, President Reagan on his birthday. And that resolution went through the process, came back to us today for a concurrence in Senate votes. And I'm sure all of you might be wondering what I'm talking about and how it relates to this resolution. 
and I'll tell you what I'm talking about and how it relates to this resolution. It got gutted, it got amended, it did something else worthy and was the only thing recognizing the only governor who's gone on to become president that this body has done on his birthday and it sort of just fell by the wayside in, uh, in the process and so there now is nothing out there uh, from this body commemorating the, the memory of our only governor to go on and serve as president. And I raise that in connection with this resolution simply to ask that that not happen again. My great friend from Oceanside has expressed all of the reasons why this resolution is good and why recognition of the men and women uh, in, in the Second World War is so important. And I urge you folks, as this goes through the rest of the process, not to now gut and amend this and come back and do something different after taking credit for having done it. This is a great resolution. Let's keep it a great resolution. I urge an I vote. I urge everyone to co-author it. And I urge you not to play with the rules and change it later. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Mr. Chavez, would you like to request co-authors on this resolution? Okay. So at this time, the clerk will open the roll. Colleagues, this is for co-authors. This is for co-authors. The clerk will close the roll. At this time, 75 co-authors are added. And without objection, we'll take a voice vote on this measure. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. We're going to go back to file item 60, AB 199. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 199 by Assemblymember Eggman and others, an act relating to alternative energy, declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Ms. Eggman, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, this is an exciting proposal, I think, that will allow the uh, tax credits not just for things like rocket ships and, and tech, which is great, but this is for uh, people who are going to make jobs out of recycled products. So for, for uh, equipment, uh, for issues related around that. Uh, this has received bipartisan support, not one no vote, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tie the votes. I 73, no 0. The measure passes. Colleagues, we're going to pass and retain file item 65. 66, 67, and 68, and at this time go to file item 69, SB 623. The clerk will read. Senate Bill 623 by Senator Lara, an act relating to workers' compensation, making an appropriation therefore. Uh, Assemblymember Gonzalez, you're recognized. Thank you. SB 623 addresses an inconsistency between state law and existing regulations relating to workers' compensation benefits for millions of undocumented Californians. This bill will ensure that an injured worker shall not be excluded from benefits under the Uninsured Employers Benefit Trust Fund or subsequent injuries benefit trust fund because of their documentation status. In 1996, Governor Pete Wilson issued an executive order directing all state agencies to initiate steps to de deny an array of health, social, and educational services to undocumented immigrants in California. A federal court later determined that order was unconstitutional. SB 623 reinforces the federal court's decision. Undocumented workers should not be denied eligibility for these funds simply because unethical employers have not followed the law. Members, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the votes. Eyes 52, noes 11, the measure passes. Going now to file item 70 for purposes of amendments, SB 501, the clerk will read. Senate Bill 501 with amendments by Assemblymember Christina Garcia. Ms. Garcia, you may open. SB 501 creates a tiered garnishment rate. These amendments narrow the tiering further so that the bill only helps workers earning less than 52000 a year. I respectfully ask for an eye on these amendments. Ms. Walter, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We support the amendments. Seeing and hearing no further debate, we can take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. The bill is out to print and back on file. File item 71, SB 355. The clerk will read. Senate Bill 355 by Senator Lara and others, an act relating to the San Gabriel and Lower Los Angeles Rivers and Mountains Conservancy. Mr. Rendon, you may open. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members, SB 355 revives the composition of the San Gabriel and Lower Los Angeles Rivers and Mountains Conservancy Board to ensure that local perspectives from cities along the Lower Los Angeles River are included in the decision-making process. This bill creates a conservancy board seat for a resident from a city that borders the Los Lower Los Angeles River. To ensure a regional balance, the bill also adds a seat for a resident from a city along the San Gabriel River. Finally, finally, the bill adds a member of the Senate and Assembly as non-voting board members, improving the Lower Los Angeles River, including parks and open space along the river, directly impacts the communities that border the river. I respectfully request your I vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. I 76, no zero, the measure passes. We're going to pass and retain file item 72 through 74. And then at this time, I want to, colleagues, go back to file item 44, which we had passed temporarily on, AB 1197. Ms. Bonilla's item, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 1197 by Assemblymember Bonilla and Act Related Dispositions. Ms. Bonilla, you may open. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker and members. I present to you AB 1197 for concurrence in Senate amendments. It upholds the impartiality of court reporters and protects consumers. Uh, the Senate amendments are technical. The bill has received bipartisan support in both houses with no no votes. I ask for your I vote. Seen and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. Ayes 73, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Going back to the order of the daily file, to file item 75, SB 575, the clerk will read. Senate Bill 575 by Senator Liu, an act relating to insurance. Ms. Brown, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On behalf of uh, Senator Carol Liu, I ask for your support. Uh, to vote on 575, which requires long-term care insurers to provide annual notification both on the availability and the amount uh, that the contingent long-term care insurance benefits have. The consumers may be eligible for contingent benefits, but by law they're um, still entitled to some benefits that they paid in their premiums. Consumers who are eligible for contingent benefits bank these benefits until they are needed. But experience shows that records of these benefits have often become lost or forgotten as age advances or memories fade. SB 575 will provide notification to seniors and their loved ones and give them a clear understanding of the benefits available to help finance and provide long-term care. This bill is sponsored by the California Department of Insurance. It has received bipartisan support, and I ask for your I vote. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Wolf you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, Chief Rice, in, in support of SB 575. I want to remind this body that we have a silver tsunami coming. And we need to do all we can to be proactive in this. So support old people by voting for this bill. Thank you. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Assemblymember Brown, you may close on this silver tsunami vote. You know, it is true that <laughs> every day a thousand people are turning 65. As you heard the lady in the back earlier today, who has been here for 45 years, and what's going to happen? We are having, and it's going to be a silver tsunami. However, that silver tsunami is going to turn into a reservoir because seniors have a reservoir of information and of help for younger folks. Please vote for this vote. This time the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll, tie the votes. Ayes 73, no zero. The measure passes. File item 76, SB 236, the clerk will read. 